Hey everybody, welcome to the MD Levroni Report, starring IFBB Hall of Famer. You know him, you love him, Kevin Levroni. And Kevin, you have yes. a special guest this week, as we remember the great Dave Draper. Who we got today? Oh man, we have a like connoisseur of the IFBB professional bodybuilding industry. I'm talking about a man who I've known for about 20 some years, 27 years, going on 30 years now, Ron. Probably, yeah, a little about, learned about 30 years. Bert Perry <laughs> is not a stranger to this sport at all. And uh, Bert, man, we want to welcome you here to the MD Levrona Report. And thank you for making the time. We know you're out in Hollywood uh, doing your horror films and everything. But it's an honor to have you here. Um, and the history that follows you, it's just incredible. Um, one thing that I wanted to touch on, Bert, was the fact that, uh, you know, we, we had another loss. Uh, and that was Dave Draper, Ron. You know that. And um, Bert, I know you have a long history um, where you can go back and encyclopedia of memories of Dave Draper and what he meant to the sport. And But why don't you share with us, Bert, um, your experience when you first met Dave Draper? Okay, well, meeting Dave Draper, let's see, I got to go back to the 90s because it's not the 70s because I was a little kid. When this guy was winning Mr. America, Mr. Universe, Mr. World, I was a baby, you know. So him and Arnold are like 16, 18 years my, my senior, you know, 18. Him and Arnold are 18 years older than me. So with that being said, you know, I mean, I grew up reading Muscle Mag and Joe Weider's Muscle and Fitness. But I met him when I moved to California in the 90s. It was at World Gym Venice. When Joe Go just opened the, like, had just opened the gym because he had a grand opening. And then, you know, the stars were there for like a few days. And I came probably the third or fourth day after the opening. And I remember uh, Dave Draper was working out one day, you know, like casually with a bandana, a tank top. And he would work out in jeans too. He wasn't always in sweatpants. He was one, he was like old school, like, you know, 1960s squatting with 500 pounds on his back. I mean, there's pictures of him in a book called Three More Reps, written by George Snyder. George Snyder wrote a book. But anyway, meeting Dave. So I walk up to him at the gym and I see him like, you know, with some 40, 50 pound dumbbells and he looks at me and I'm just like standing there like in awe, like this is the blonde bomber. This is the guy I had on my wall when I was a teenager in high school in New York. This is Dave. I knew who he was, but I didn't know how to approach him. So when he put the dumbbell down, I walked up to him and he was very soft spoken. He was not a, like a loud mouth. He wasn't like gregarious, like Arnold with that. How are you doing? You know, he's a salt like, hi, hi, my name is Dave Draper. I was like, wow. I said, it's nice to meet you. You're my hero of bodybuilding. I said, Mr. Draper, you were an inspiration to me because I got a lot of pictures of you on my wall. When I was growing up, I used to cut pictures out of you and Muscle and Fitness, and you were training with Arnold and at the gym at, at Venice and flexing your arms and wearing the bandana. He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I said, he asked me, he said, what brings me to California? And I remember it was the early 90s, the middle 90s, 92, 93, whenever World Gym opened. And I said, well, I'm here to try to become a Hollywood actor, but I'm also a bodybuilder but I'm not competitive, but I do take pictures and write articles about people in the sport because I worked for Robert Kennedy, Muscle Mag International. Robert Kennedy, he knows who that was. He's like, you worked for Bob? He said, Bob was one of the first guys to photograph me when I moved out here in the 60s, 60s and 70s. I mean, Robert Kennedy started Muscle Mag in like 72 or the early 70s. Off and on, Bob had a lot of failures with that magazine, but he was very persistent about publishing it, publishing and publishing. But anyway, so Dave said, you know, I would like to continue my workout, but it was a pleasure meeting you. And I said, well, I said, can I ask you a few questions? I said, can I just ask you a few questions? I said, why did you quit the movie industry? He well, said, see, well, Bert, I, I never knew, Ron, did you know that? I never knew that uh, Mr. Draper was in the film industry. Ron, did you know that? I saw him in a movie on TV and we were inspired by him long before I knew anything about bodybuilding. 
He was in a movie called Don't Make Waves with Tony Curtis and Sharon Tate in 1967. And they, it was one of the movies they would play on the UHS station in Boston. And there was a scene where there was like a big flood. The, the, their house was going to come off the cliff. He comes in, Dave Draper takes his shirt off from because he'd been out in the pouring rain. And he sits there and he wrings it out in his chest and everything. I was like, geez, that guy's jacked. And I'm like five, six years old. So I don't know who that is, but that guy looks like a freaking cartoon character. Hey, Bert. Now, right. now I know you saw, you saw your hero in the gym. Um, and I mean, I know you're kind of like a little intimidated. You had to be, but like how, what was his stature to see him actually at his peak back then? Like, was he, what was his height and how much, what did he weigh? He was six one. I was just probably like a hair taller than him. Remember, he was 18 years of my junior, I mean, senior, when I met him in the early 90s. I don't know, it was 92, 93. And he was still in great shape. He was all, like, he he was like the combat guy. Combat. A lot of people don't know. And I used to talk to Art Zeller, who was like a famous photographer, if you guys know who the late Art Zeller was. I knew he was the one that photographed yeah. everybody up on Muscle Rock. Yeah. Art Zeller photographed Arnold for that cover, Education of a Bodybuilder, up at Muscle Rock, yeah. that, that pose with the bicep three-quarter arm thing. Anyway, so Dave, Dave was telling me that, you know, he did a lot of photo shoots, and, uh, and, and uh, his hat, he was uh, 6'1", he weighed 215, 225, he had 18-inch arms, 18-inch calves, 17-inch forearms, which was kind of perfect in the city. Like he got that back three quarter back turn and hit the forearm, and it was like a lightning bolt like come out of his arm. When he and he told me his diet was tuna and water, mm. but he said he kept the meat of tuna. So I tried that, but not forty cases a week. I mean forty times a week. And he said that with a little bit of diuretics. You know, back yeah. in the day, man. They didn't have the anabolics that these guys have of the 80s and 90s and the 2000s, they just had Decaderoblin, Primabolin, and a little bit of Winstrol, Winstrol V. That was, yeah. it. That was it. There was hey, nothing Bert. else that these guys were on, eating a lot of food, protein, power, and creatine. And they were a big right. believer of training hard, meaning that I, I knew in my heart that this guy – he was going to be a great bodybuilder with or without any type of animal frame. Right. He had those like King Kong shoulders. His shoulder girth was about, you know, my shoulder girth when I'm in my best shape was like 24. He was like 27 across from the back. Wow. 27, like shoulder to shoulder. See that in the pictures. Mm -hmm. The only weakness that Dave Draper had was his calves. His thighs were decent, but the upper was phenomenal. And that's what I believe got him in the movie industry because that upper body was just like vascular and ripped mm. and he knew how to diet. He was also, you know, competitive. He won Mr. America 1965. He won Mr. Universe 1966. Then he went on to win Mr. He took a break and he won Mr. World 1970. And Sergio Oliva and Larry Scott were winning the Olympias. So mm. I think Joe wanted him to like, compete in those contests but he dave just could never get it together to beat arnold we all know yeah. that arnold dominated the 70s after sergio oliva lost to him in uh what was it uh 69 yes yeah, wait Ar sergio won 67 68 69 and arnold said he'll never lose again in 1970 yeah. he just took off and dave draper did like the 72 olympia the 73 olympia but he was like fourth fifth Mm -hmm. I mean, he didn't take it seriously because he was still involved in the in the movie industry with the Don't Make Waves, the Muscle Beach. He did an episode on the Monkees. Beverly Hillbillies. He on, wow. Um, yeah. yeah, he was on an episode of the Monkees, a TV show. He did David and Goliath. Hmm. That was a TV show about like a Christian channel where he dressed like a lion cloth, like he, like he was Goliath with a little cloth around his mm -hmm. waist. I mean, this guy worked. He worked, but he said at the end of the day, he did also did a movie with Jerry Lewis. And Jerry Lewis was like the Jim Carrey of the 60s. Everybody <laughs> knows that. Jerry Lewis, the funny man, the nutty professor. Yeah, he worked with right. 
Was it so, Lord, Lord Love a Duck, Bert? Was that the movie with Jerry Lewis? What? Lord Love a Duck? Yes. Yeah, with Jerry Lewis. Dave Draper was in that. Mm -hmm. Wow. The, the, geez, this man worked. He was before Arnold in movies. He was in the same time period of, of Steve Reeves' Hercules, as we all know who Steve Reeves yeah. was. You know, but Dave was in a class by himself. He had naturally blonde hair. He didn't have to dye his hair blonde or bleach anything. He was just a blonde. I mean, Joe Weider discovered him in, in New Jersey. That's where he got discovered. A lot of people don't, what, like, how did he come to California? Well, Joe Weider's original uh, training grounds was in New Jersey. They were located in Perth, Amboy, New Jersey, hmm. the Weider locations. But then Joe... You know, with the magazines, he started to expand. And, and Dave was one of his warehouse guys, strongman warehouse. And he told Dave that if you come to California, like he told, sells all the dreams, you know, I'll, I'll take care of you. You know, come to California, <laughs> Dave, you'll be the blonde bomber. You know, I'll put you on the covers of magazines. And he did. Joe honored yeah. his work. But Dave said he had some issues with Joe about paying him you know, for all those cover shoots and stuff that he did. So, you know, like every every Titan or champion has their ups and downs with, you know, the mentors and the leaders. And he had a falling out with Joe in the early 70s where he had to sue him. Mm. He had to sue the master blaster, yes. And that's documented in court. However, Joe was scared because he had taken so many photo shoots of Dave he was willing to settle and Dave settled for $150,000 and people said he could have got half a million. Wow. At the time of and what year was this Bert in the seventies? Huh? It was what in the seventies. He sued Joe Weider for not paying him for those okay. cubs. So I mean, he, he had a legitimate case. He put him on the protein powder. He put him on the dynamic muscle builder, the weight gainer, the carb thing, yeah. flexing, you know, holding those exercise equipment bars and all that. Yeah. Back then, right. these guys didn't have contracts like you, Kevin, and Sean, and Flex. There was no contract. It was just a handshake. It's like, oh, right. yeah, I'm going to pay you. I'll pay you later. You, you, I put you on the cover of the magazine. I made you famous. Why are you complaining right. about it? Everybody knows you. <laughs> but you can't eat a magazine. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you can't, so, <laughs> you can't eat a magazine, man. So Dave got heated about that because Joe didn't want to pay him. So he had to sue the man. That's right. what opened the doors for you guys to get contracts, whether you want to believe it or not. Hmm. Because when Arnold came on the scene in 69 and 70 from Graz, Austria, which is another story about the great Dave Draper, Draper met Arnold when he first came to America because Dave was probably five years older. He was born in 1942. Arnold was mm -hmm. born in 42. So he was five years older than Arnold and he was already on the cover of the magazines. So when Arnold met Dave Draper, they said at Gold's Gym Venice on Pacific Drive, I mean, Pacific, Pacific yeah. in Venice, the original Gold's Gym, not the one on Hampton Drive because right. it was mm -hmm. Pacific. And he, right. he met Arnold Schwarz, he said, and Arnold could barely speak that broken English, like, how are you? You know, like, that's all he knew. And uh, Dave said, where do you live? And Arnold took him to his apartment, and it was an empty apartment. There was nothing <laughs> in there, you know, like, uh, like, like a, a table and a chair. A lot of people don't know. Our, the blonde bomber was a craftsman. He was a carpenter. That was oh, his I had no idea. Did you know that, Ron? Yeah, yeah. He made furniture for everybody, all the guys at Gold's. He did. Really? For free. Wow. He made Arnold his bed set, a table, and a, a dresser for his living room, and and table for dining area to eat, all wow. for free. Wow. How many bodybuilders wow. do that in today's times for a newcomer coming from another state or another country? That's that's called you know what do you call it? Camaraderie. That's this called love right there. The bodybuilders of this generation could learn from. When, right. you're, when you're so, already established, guys, if you're listening to this and there's a new guy on the scene, you welcome him. You embrace him. You don't become his enemy and become envious. You know, you help the guy. Right. And that's what Dave so Bert, Bert, you would have to say that um, from your take and knowing um, Dave and, and, and how he was and how you perceived him and all, that he he had a, a good heart. He was a man. Yes, he did. Had a good heart. He was a kind hearted. He was a gentle giant. 
He was a very strong man. He could tear telephone books in half. He used to do strength exhibitions, you know, like the muscle beat shows. He was part of that. Back in the city, you know, they walk around with their shirt off and at the pit and train. I mean, there's pictures of Dave Draper. I kid you not. You guys can Google this of him training with Arnold at Muscle Beach Pit and squatting with his ass to the floor with like four or five plates on his back. With blue yeah. jeans, denim blue jeans. Those pictures are out there. there there's and a I'm famous gonna... picture, Bert. You know this picture. It's Dave. He had like a sponge or something around the bar. It was either four plates or five, and the bar was bent like a bow across his back. Was and he was, <laughs> I said he would do ass to the floor squats, like yeah. like literally like like duck squat with four or five plates on his back and bounce up and do ten reps. He was he was one of the strongest bodybuilders of the seventies era. Mm. He gave Rico Colombo a run for his money on that bench and squat, and he used to do behind the neck press. They say he could do 315 easy. Oh, I don't know what man. was on. And let me tell you something. Dave had his ups and downs with um, getting high a little bit, you know, back in the 70s because it was the LSD era. Something before Kevin LeBron and, you know, Lee Haney and, and Sean and Flex. And Dave liked to experiment with hallucinogenics. Art Zeller told me the story one day at World Gym about our my strong man here. He said, you know, back in the 60s, Dave was, you know, he liked to party a little bit and 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 ex do hallucinogenics because he was the bomb bomber, the white boy, you know, the hippie with the bandana. And mm. there was one incident, Art Zeller, I swear, light, lightning strike me dead. He said, Dave came to the beach one day and was working out in the pit. And then after the pit, he must have like slipped uh, like a pill or something. And he got wild on the beach. And they said they had to throw a beach net over him to calm him down. A volleyball <laughs> beach net. Wow. Like six, you know, security. Oh <laughs> is that <laughs> right? Wow. This is this is part of his wild, you know, the wild side. Yeah. He had a wild side. You and know, then he, I, I want to make sure we mention at some point. He was a very gifted writer. He was an excellent writer. Oh, yeah. I was going to get on that. He okay. wrote about five or six books, and he had a weekly newsletter mm -hmm. by himself. Oh, wow. Yeah. Joe Weider, ladies and gentlemen. Dave Draper wrote books without Joe Weider guiding him independently. And he moved to, he left Hollywood in the 60s. I mean, 70, 73, 74, because he said he got burnt out of this muscle beach scene. So he moved to uh -huh. Santa Cruz. He moved to Santa Cruz. And then mm -hmm. uh, into hibernation. And then uh, he met his first wife. And Dave had a bout with alcoholism. He had a battle with alcohol. He admitted it. He didn't hide it. He wasn't in the closet. Right. He had an alcohol, but he came back. He was, the, he was always the guy that... You know, I could look at it and say, wow, he disappeared from the sport. And then, bam, he come right back. He was always like mm -hmm. acting, like in Santa Cruz. He had a following. He had a radio, uh, radio something. He used to do something on the radio. I mean, newsletter. he had a newsletter for more than five years. Wow. And then you can look that up too. Anybody want to archive his new letter? Because I knew I met some of his fans. They said, "Yeah," and he would answer questions literally. Mm -hmm. like you write him a new a question, and he would answer you. He would return. Oh, wow. This is how real he was with his fans. He was awesome. Instagram or Facebook or Twitter was writing letters. Mm -hmm. You know, you get a letter. Now, remember one time I called Bill Pearl. Not to cut swift gears, but I called Bill Pearl one time and he said, if you write me a letter, I'll write you back. Hmm. And I was like early 80s and Bill Pearl's alive today. God bless him living up in, in Oregon somewhere, Salem, Oregon or Eugene, Oregon. He's 90 years old. Wow. But mm -hmm. Bill Pearl knew Dave Draper and they, you know, all these guys, man, they were just different. They were different breed of men writing yeah. letters, Who writes letters today. <laughs> What bodybuilder can you write and he's going to write you back on a letter on a postcard or, a, you know, like that was murder. <laughs> right. That's what Dave Draper was, man. In Santa wow. Cruz, writing letters and answering questions. And he, he wrote four or five books. Rich Kaspari said to me, Rich Kaspari, this is true. Anybody know who Rich Kaspari is, CEO of Gaspari Nutrition? Richie asked me, he said, Bert, 
I didn't even know that Dave Draper wrote books. I said, are you kidding me? I said, Google his, uh, his name and it'll pop up all the books that he wrote, written by Dave Draper, forwarded by Dave Draper. It didn't say Joe Weider, it said Dave yeah. Draper. Yeah. So wow. this man, he was literally a genius. Mm. He knew mm. how to build muscle and he, he was living proof. There's no question in my mind. He probably could have won the Olympia had he not moved to Santa Cruz and, and he yeah. ran away from Hollywood because he said Hollywood is fake. He said, it's too right. fake for me. He said, Hollywood is fake. I don't want to, I don't like those people. And I'm, Bert, I'm and he ran away. Bert, when, was the, when was the last time you uh, spent some time with Dave before he passed? The last time I saw him, he came to Joe Weider's tribute funeral. He came to, oh, what happened? Kevin, someone's trying to call Kevin. He's there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he went to Joe Weider's funeral tribute. I saw him there. That was 2012. Okay. He was at Reg Park's funeral because that was, you know, Arnold's mentor. He was there. Mm -hmm. Every time I would see him, I was always at a tribute, you know, like mm -hmm. to somebody passing away. But I'd say the most, the last time publicly that he was down in Southern California was the Joe Weider tribute. He was there. And so was mm -hmm. Kevin Levine. And so was yeah, I was there. The others at yes. the tribute. As a matter of fact, I sit at the table with Mr. Lavroni with Michael Hearn, strongman O'Hearn, who's just you know still squatting 500 pounds. But <laughs> anyway, Dave Draper, <laughs> he had his suit and his jacket on. Yeah, I don't know, unbelievable. They let him talk. I don't think he went What's up that? to the microphone and no, talked. No, no, he didn't. He didn't speak. They didn't, didn't let him speak. talk. Ter Terry Crews spoke a little. Remember? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes, but no, um, they didn't, they didn't, um, Dave, they Dave didn't go up to say anything, maybe, no, he didn't, maybe he was too, you know, there's a lot of people in that room that was kind of like shocked and, um, you know, we were just at all, you know, at all of what had happened and Joe passed away and so everything was like, you know, like a fog, man. I think, um, you know, I, I, it's just the, just the fact that um, Bert had time to come on and uh, speak with us in his busy schedule in California. Yeah. Um, we'll definitely have him back. Yeah. But uh, incredible encyclopedia of of his uh, knowledge with uh, bodybuilding he has. Yeah. You know, I, I, I want to add one last thing about uh, Dave. It's that I always got the impression from everything I read about him and, you know, things like he's not in the movie Pumping Iron because – he would, he'd be out of that gym at like, he'd train at like five in the morning. He'd be gone by the time the other guys were getting there to train. Mm -hmm. He was, uh, you know, he did his own thing. He wasn't, I don't think winning the Olympia or winning like tons of titles, big titles. He won some good titles, but I think it was just part of his life. He wasn't like completely tunnel vision focused on bodybuilding. He had so many other things he was interested in and the acting that he yeah. wanted. He was, uh, he, he had a great physique, but I just, I think, uh, he didn't, it, bodybuilding was a part of his life, but it wasn't his whole life, even though he ended up being an icon and inspiring so many people. Yeah, I mean, it's impressive the fact that, uh, yeah, I mean, it's news to me that uh, he was in the movies, you know, yeah, on TV yeah. and he was in that mainstream uh, yeah. before Arnold. Yeah. So that's, that's, a, that's impressive, man. Um, you know, again, you know, we lost, uh, we lost a true hero uh, who, uh, who set an example for, all of us bodybuilders, Mr. Dave Draper, man. May he rest in peace, brother. Yeah. To, uh, you know, condolences to anyone who knew him. And, uh, you know, he's, his memory lives on and on forever. So it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's cool that uh, we, had, we had him as part of the sport as long as we did. And, you know, he was one of that golden era icons that inspired so many people. So, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, they, they laid it down for us, you know, like uh, Bert was saying, you know, it's like these guys, we just, you know, the history of this sport runs very, very deep. The vision of Joe Weider and what has Joe Weider, what he's done for so many bodybuilders, Dave Draper, all the way up until, uh, you know, for now. Even now, the guys are walking on the Mr. Olympia stage because of uh, Joe and his vision. Yeah. And um, man, it's been an honor. It's been an honor, man. Uh, just talking about him. I've never met him, but uh, it's been an honor listening to Bert talk about all the history of yeah, of, uh, he really knows a lot of that. I think he's yeah. coming. Looks like he's coming back. It's hard to say. Yeah, we'll um, we can bring him back on another episode, Ron. Yeah, let's do that. So yeah. uh, let's For wrap now, it up. 
Yeah, man. For now, I think uh, I think that's it, guys. Uh, we want to pay a tribute and uh, respect to um, bodybuilding hero, bodybuilding legend, um, one of the greatest bodybuilders, one of the most famous bodybuilders ever lived, Mr. Dave Draper. And uh, it was an honor to uh, have Bert on our show. Thank you very much, Bert. Bert Perry for joining us. And Ron, we definitely have to bring Bert back um, in the near future for his sure. encyclopedia of information of bodybuilding. For sure. Incredible human being. Uh, for now, it's Kevin Leveroni with my co-host, Ron Harris, MD Leveroni Report. And Ron, we're signing out, my brother. Yes, uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel, get the notifications. We appreciate you watching these shows like the Leveroni Report. We'll see you next time. That's it. Peace.